close to the Titacama forest. Uh, and Titacama is uh, sand, uh, poison, or, or loving waters, place of loving waters. So I hope to, to bring the chaos, the somewhat say violence, the gentleness, the connections, and yeah, the healing that water brings. Uh, hope to, to bring all of that forth, forth today. Uh, yeah, I think we can go in. I'm going to just ask everybody for the brief moment just to put yourselves on mute. Uh, there will be a moment where we will be unmuting and engaging. Uh, yeah, uh, let me start probably with my name. Yeah. My name is Shivani. Uh, I'm not going to speak too much into who I am and the work I do. I think uh, I'm, I'm more curious to hold space and to sort of get into the session. So I'll save probably a bit of my introductions for the end of the session. Uh, the session is about mad question asking uh, around leadership. Uh, I want to set the tone of the space uh, by inviting us all to 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 a, a mindset inviting your body to a space that uh, is um, echo uh, that is like uh, how can i put it in defiance of the current paradigm in defiance of the way things have been going uh, and I'm inviting us to to utilize this 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 framing or this thinking to spark new ideas, to cultivate new ideas, and to yeah flex, to flex and to stretch uh, into thinking uh, that is that is outside of our current sort of paradigm of the, of, of of living, of being, of thinking about leadership. Uh, and yeah, so as a as an entry point to this, I would like to maybe invite us. Uh, and I wonder how we're going to manage this. There's 28 people. There's a lot of people in here. Uh, so maybe I will hold space for for five people or seven people. We can just go by the way of feeling into this. Uh, the prompt is the question. The prompt is, and please feel free to use the text as well. Uh, and you can have a moment to sort of just invite your body to, to think about the question, not just your mind, but invite your body and to also feel where you will be responding from once I give the prompt. You feel like literally somatically where do you feel movement, or where do you feel energy flowing from or to. Uh, so the first question as an icebreaker uh, is I'm inviting you to think or to remember or to reimagine or to imagine a space in which you saw leadership that was non-hierarchical, uh, non-capitalist, uh, non-patriarchal. Uh, yeah, inviting your body to, to, to remember a memory, an experience, a moment in which you sensed leadership in a very different way. Uh, yes, uh, I think that, that is the question. Inviting you, if you have any reflections or moments that you can remember where you experienced leadership uh, in a non-hierarchical space. Uh, and what did that look like? What did that, yeah, what was that? What was that feeling? What was, what was that moment? Uh, so I think, yeah, if anybody feels called to respond to this, uh, you can either unmute yourself and speak into the space, or you're free to use, or I will also be viewing the chats. And you can take a moment uh, to really, yeah, saturate in the question. Um, 
Shivani, I can start. Yeah. It's Vanessa. Oh, hey, Vanessa. <laughs> uh, um, so what came to mind was um, my friend, uh, Fetkat Rechlopstan Kreper. And when I was with him um, up in the Kalahari, I experienced a strong sense of leadership from him, but with, never with uh, any hierarchical feeling. Um, he he didn't he, he uh, didn't say very much, but one got uh, a lot of. Uh, I felt I got a lot of learning from him. I got an amazing example and a gentleness, and it felt like leadership in that I learned a lot, but there was no force. Thank you, Vanessa, for that share. Shivani, I could try. Um, I'm Luda, calling from New Jersey in the United States. I'm thinking of this experience, frequent experience, with my child, with a four-year-old, where I traditionally wouldn't think of it as leadership, but I know that she knows her needs. I know she knows what's interesting. I know she knows what's natural. And she provides direction. So some people say, oh, don't let your child, quote unquote, drive the car, right? And we don't. And I think what ends up happening is that there's negotiation, right? Obviously, if she wants to run across the street, you know, on the way to whatever her need is, right, I would stop her. But it's more out of necessity, right? Like it's it's sort of evaluation of what's needed in the moment right now, not out of an agenda, right? Although some might argue the agenda is to survive, <laughs> right? But so many times, you know, like she could dig her heels in, you know, if I suggest something that doesn't make sense, right? Or if she's hungry, she'd say, this is what I need right now. And I'm not going to bed. It's like, baby, it's time to go to bed. Like, no, I'm not going to bed until you feed me. And so to me, in a sense, like that provides direction, but also an opportunity for negotiation, right? So to me, that feels a bit of like a leadership model that I appreciate. And again, maybe it's not, it's just somebody who provides direction. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, brace up, Luda. Thank you very much for that share. Uh, yeah, some resonance there. Um, and, and I want to add just about one more, one more sprinkle into the pot of movements and questioning as it flows through your head. Also, inviting you to think of an example in which you saw someone maybe defy systems uh, of leadership, uh, also as a sprinkle into the pot of thoughts. Noticing, yeah. Todd. I like to ask one sort of pot. All right, greetings, Shivani. I'm tuning in from North Florida in the United States. So it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I used to be a first grade reading teacher and I definitely had to sort of defy the hierarchical leadership within the model of how I was trained. Um, I quickly realized that in order for me to actually do my job, I had to put the students' needs first, listen to my spirit, and tune into what each child needed in my classroom, which is very different from how I was taught how to teach in my training program. But essentially, I had to see the child as part of the co-creative process and not as this inferior being that needed to be like treated as a second-class citizen or something. Like, like I needed to appreciate and affirm their unique wisdom as a part of the curriculum and not approach them as if they um, didn't have anything to contribute. So in that way, I had to kind of restructure the classroom. Even the way we sat, we sat in a circle in the classroom instead of me towering over them. And I also um, and I brought in music and art and culture as well. Like we had a drum and dance circle every morning where I would sit on the floor and drum. <laughs> Very non-traditional for a American classroom, but they caught on and we were able to connect to each other. So much so that they, they demanded we do it every morning. I, I couldn't not do it. So in that way, I had to kind of step away from the leadership that told me I needed to yell and scream at them and discipline them like I was there like a second parent, but 
to come at them from a compassionate point of view and like a human point of view. And yeah, I see that in other cultures as I study education across the world, but in America, especially in public school systems, it just seems to be very outdated and um, not conducive for the whole child learning. So thank you for adding that little nugget there. <laughs> Yo, shout out, massive gratitude for that. I want to add something. You describe uh, Kabi in the chat. Okay. Um, I experienced a type of leadership here in Bali that was very fascinating. Was that uh, the Balinese followed this calendar where they are able to identify their group dynamics. So each one follow under a certain Europe uh, and that Europe allow you to have a certain energy day and they switch around their hierarchy or th their dynamic leadership based on the energetic of that day. And it was, you know, which sounds very interesting, but it's like, okay, they just, you know, deferring leadership to each other. And then there was one day where the high priest was supposed to give a lecture at a, a large university. And on um, they look at all the Europe and they see who is the most in power. Well, apparently I was the one that was most in power that day energetically. And they put me in charge to get up in front of like, I don't know, a thousand students to give the presentation. Now, so in my process of doing this, I don't know, may, like I said, it could be a placebo effect. It could be an energetic effect that they, this calendar believe that it supports us, but I delivered very well. And, you know, I represented the, 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 um, their, their present, his presentation very well. And, so I, I researched into more of that. And like I said, there's, it, it broke away from this hierarchy of power rather than and it moved into a larger divinity of power, power. And that divinity gives you the right and everybody in the community supports you and also give you that right. And it, it allowed this dynamic leadership to rotate and it, it creates an equality where there, there is no boss, there is no leader everybody fluctuates. So I just wanted to share that. Yo, massive gratitude for the share. So I wanted to say also want people to notice uh, as we share in just where they feel movements and sparkles and tingles and uh, oof, uh, in their bodies from time to time. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I'll, I'll speak into that at the end. Uh, I want to probably invite one more or two more people to speak into the space. Then I want to lace it with a few more uh, sources and marinades. Let's go. Ah, lo escribí en el chat para ser concisa. Ay, no te escucha. Ya. Eh, lo que he sentido, yo, yo lo que escribí así para ser concisa, lo que he sentido en los momentos, reuniones, encuentros de, sobre todo organizativos de, de la red de Muchugawa y en el Ecuador, ¿no? En la Amazonía. Bueno, en la... Ah, ya. Yeah. Someone could possibly just help me with the translation. Um, she says uh, that's yeah. fine, just read what, what the, the translation in the chat. Creo que ya lo tradujo Camilo. 
¿Quieres que lo lea? I'm from Amazon, Ecuador. What I felt is my ¿Natalie? family who shook out my liberty. Ah, ah sí. Para, para las personas que hablan español, tal vez. Y, tal vez ya lo leyeron. No hay problema. Camilo lo escribió en inglés. Yeah, so, Natalie was... Yeah, Nat Natalie was wrote in the chat in Spanish, but I think Camilo translated to English. So if, I don't know if you can read it. Gracias. Fox from the Amazon is, is that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natalie. Massive gratitude for speaking it into the space. See. And Todd, I'm noticing you. Want to jump in? Your audio is still not working, Todd. Here, yeah, <clears throat> you can type in the chat if you'd like to sh maybe share that way. Yeah. Sorry, we'd love to hear from you. And Madeline, thanks for your share in the chat. Um, Shivani, did you want to hear from one more then? Does anyone else want to? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Does anybody else have one more before we jump into the next layer of sources? I had an ex. Hi, I'm Zoe from Kofu Grace. Um, I was accompanying an eight-year-old with severe fear of heights, um, climbing a, a very high tree. And my experience is of the leadership of the tree when she was beginning to get um, panicky and my direction wasn't really helping her so she got really really close to the tree and I asked her what she was doing and she was listening she said she was listening and what had happened was that the tree literally picked up the volume of the pulsations of the liquids in its trunk and got her acoustic attention and led her to spend, I think she spent about seven minutes listening to the tree. Um, and then she climbed to the top. Oof, big oof for me. <laughs> uh, wow, massive gratitude for your shares, your, your stories. Oh, your your sparks of of of, of rapture and remembering. Uh, it's like massive for me right now to hear this. Uh, so I'm inviting everybody. So before we go and add the next uh, sources, I'm inviting everybody just to move if you want to, and yeah, just to move and bring attention to your body. Um uh, yeah, uh, inviting leadership of the body uh, and whatever was, whatever is moving. Uh, yeah, I'll give you just a minute for that. The. So as you move your body, I want us to go into a next, uh, can say, I have to use time, because uh, we're gonna be, I get a bit messy sometimes when we, when we get into these spaces. So I'm gonna use honor the leadership of time, which is not the leadership I'm trying to entertain. And I'm gonna hold space for 10 minutes of, I want to evoke and provocate uh, from a line from uh, the notorious BIG, some mad question asking. Uh, and I want us to prompt and to bold on questions, a sort of uh, a 
wild train in various directions with lots of tentacles uh, and to invite questions around uh, how leadership could look like. And I'm inviting you guys to like think outside the box and challenge certain assumptions that we all sort of face in our day-to-day -day lives. Especially, I think there's already a flow and, and a presence of knowing in this space already. So from this space of knowing, deeper knowing, uh, I would like us to put together as a challenge uh, questions that challenge the assumptions of, of the of, of leadership uh, that in the, the dominant culture's form of leadership. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if that makes sense for everyone. I can just reframe it one more time more clearly. Inviting questions, strictly questions, and each, us, each other to build on each other's questions around uh, what leadership should be or could be. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know if that comes in clear. And if it doesn't, probably sit with it and, and build on the uh, unclarity. And maybe I can put a few prompts in. Uh, Perdón, Cami, ¿cómo el liderazgo podría qué? Se me cortó ahí. ¿Liderazgo podría? Are you wanting this in, as a full group, Giovanni? Or... Ah, yeah. Break out. Gracias. Uh, yes, I think collectively, and we can just use the same product that we did at the beginning. So those that feel called can unmute and we can like... Está bien, so solo que tú me escuchaste y, y quería solo que me complete. Gracias. De nada. Está bien, ya. Thank you, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Sí, único que sé. So, <laughs> a little bit of Spanish. So, yeah, a prompt, a prompt would maybe be, what would leadership look like if we rejected the ideas of expertise and embraced collective decision-making? That's a question. Uh, I'm going to give you guys one more question. It's going to be the last question from me. How could leadership possibly... Uh, what would leadership look like if it had to be fueled by maybe thoughts of care and and maybe love over like ideas of domination and control? Oh, I'm seeing the chat. So let let me get to that. I'm noticing Todd's question. Uh, what would leadership look like as a source from within and not with and not an external service or service provider? Mm. Leadership is having choices and making a difficult choice. Mm -hmm. How can we create cultures where emergent leadership brings us towards mutual to brings us towards mutually beneficial futures? Mm. What's moving in my mind right now, I'm like wanting to invite us to like think that we never knew what leadership means. Think we were ignorant and we never knew what leadership means. And what what possibly could leadership mean? And what questions could, could, could we have about leadership from this space? I got one. I got one. And this one like sits with me a lot. What if leadership evoked chaos? <laughs> Such a Giovanni question. <laughs> hmm. I'm noticing, Gauri, the, uh, the moment that asks one to take an action, oopsie, which heart, which our heart is pushing us to. Hmm. 
How does leadership flow between members of a community based on factors? Can leadership flow to and from inanimate objects? Hmm. Please feel free to also drop in your hmm in the chats or just to unmute yourself to drop in a hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what non-human leaders have we encountered? What does leadership look like in the womb space? Mm. Yeah, I'm noticing like harvesters. Guys, I forgot, yo, there's a prompt uh, for harvesting. And there's like, I think this is a mad harvesting session. So if you guys could just hashtag harvesting somewhere along the lines in your chats. I think there's some big things going in here. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go through some of the chats as we think and type. Uh, leadership will always provoke chaos. I love it. <laughs> what non-human leaders have we encountered? Uh, what would leadership look like when we recognize power we wield over ourselves and others and gave it up intentionally? Oof, uh, oof for that one. How can we lead from stillness? What about nonverbal leaders? How do we listen to them? How could they lead? Oof. There's a note of in Asian cultures is nonverbal leaders. <laughs> what would leadership look like if we didn't know? The concept of power. Hmm. What does leadership look like in the dream space? Does leadership imply followership? Oof. I'm gonna invite three more minutes of meandering of movements of thoughts of questions and yes just answer i think uh, we will be going into breakouts what if leadership was given up Oof, that one reaches to me like, like church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as we move outside of this space, uh, I want to invite us to move around once again. Uh, breathe, drink water, you can have water close by, shake as also more sort of ideas come in. And I would maybe want us to go through the chats or if there's anything that you are holding in your mind or your thoughts to sort of invite the, a question to meet it, invite maybe one of these ideas on leadership. And uh, let's just see how much we are. Uh, I'm gonna invite myself, I'm gonna invite myself to be linked to the leadership of Eileen. Uh, you could help me think about a number uh, for breakout rooms to maybe spend 10 minutes or so in a breakout room. 
uh, where I'll invite uh, everyone to take a question or from the from what was spoken or maybe from what was put in the chat and to maybe lend yourself to a bit of a sharing space with some of the friends and family and kin in this space today. Uh, so yeah, possible breakout room, I don't know, maybe four, 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 ten minutes. Would that be possible? Mm -hmm. And well, we organize that. I just want to keep on reading here. Uh, what are we being led towards? Leaders tend to lead through their actions in caring for the communities, not only today, but also for the future generations, non-egocentric. Please do remember to message here if anyone needs translation in Hindi. Uh, thank you. I'm unable to join the breakout room. Uh, we're going to be organizing that shortly. And I only just joined it so I can listen, but I have not much to say in the breakout room. Oh, that's lovely. You can also just be spoken into. OK. OK, are we ready? They are open. Tavani, did you want to be in a room? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, let's put you. Thanks for patience. Okay, <clears throat> rooms are open. See you all in a little bit. Oh, always too short. <laughs> Yes, <clears throat> it's, to, it's to leave the conversation thirsty for the next. That's yeah, so what happens if you add a sauce. <laughs> the, yo, so, is everybody back? Yeah. Ellie. Yes. Hello, Cheva. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Para hablar algo de inglés. <laughs> Yeah, we are hacking here the English channel. No, please put me in the Spanish channel again. <laughs> huh, it won't let me start. Okay, I'll just wait for... Are you are you in the Camilo or is Ali new to the know then I can speak? Yeah, give me one second, Camilo. It's like I need to start it over. Spanish. Okay, you should be there. Okay, sweet. So thank you everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm holding space probably for the next five, six minutes uh, for us to share any insights, questions, uh, sparks, movements, oomphs, uh, uh, yeah, to, from the breakouts. Uh, so yeah, feel free to unmute yourself or type away in the chats. I'd share. If no one's. Please do, Vanessa. Okay, um, Madeline and I, is it Madeline? Madeline, Madeline. Um, and I had a really great conversation um, talking about our lives and just, you know, everything in between and how um, she's working on a local farm and a permaculture farm in Barcelona and I'm in a community farm and she uh, talked about a really awesome um, rotating leadership model and that reminded me of uh, something I did when I was in college and um, then I shared with her could I share screen uh, share my whiteboard perchance is that possible. I don't know if it Go is. Go ahead. Okay. So um, this is like a spiral. And um, we were just talking about like how leadership is really in the local and the small scale. And so in my mind, I imagine like a spiral coming all the way down. And if you're, if everyone's like a marble, 
if you spend more time, give more love, pour more money, pour more energy, not my money, but like your, you know, your self into a community, you become heavier and people put more trust in you. People, more, you know, people put more things for you inside and then you fall closer and closer to the bottom. And the reason why it's in the bottom is because when you're the leader, you are serving and carrying the weight of your community. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to share that because it came from our conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that, Teresa. It's amazing how time flies. I'm thinking we probably have space for one more share. Uh, no, bueno, eh, por honor al tiempo, eh, en nuestro grupo compartimos. ¿Sí se está traduciendo? Eh, Camilo está traduciendo en el chat. I think Camilo is translating in the chat what Natalie is going to say. Dale, Nati. Ok, en, en, en nuestro grupo, ¿está escribiendo o hablando? Está escribiendo, él no puede hablar aquí. Ay, entonces tiene que ser muy corto. Bueno, eh, a ver, más bien voy a dejar la, la, la pregunta que más me, 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 me resuena, que es necesitamos liderazgo, <ríe> porque en la red Mochiraguay, en la red de Ecuador, no hay un líder. Hay seres que nos juntamos a intentar según estamos con la disposición. Y como dice, si hay semilla viva, va a germinar y se producen acciones. Si lo que se lanza es semilla, termina y florece. Y si no, no pasa nada. Pero así nos manejamos en la red municipal. Bueno, ojalá Carmen lo pueda resumir. Gracias. Thank you. <laughs> Muchas gracias. <laughs> thank you very much for the share and thank you very much, Camilo, for the interpretation. Uh, and thank you very much, Natalie, for speaking into the space. Uh, yes, just like that, the hour is gone. The leadership of time. Uh, <laughs> So as we conclude, I first want to share a massive gratitude for everybody for joining this sort of container, uh, for moving through this provocation of leadership, for helping me, because I've been sitting with this specifically around themes of the chaos and uh, leadership has given up. That's been pretty real for me. Uh, so yeah, I'm just super grateful uh, for, for, for everybody joining this space. I wish to, oh my, my, I wish to have moved and prov provoked you in ways of thinking and, 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 and moving into leadership, uh, or out of leadership, uh, as like I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling and I'm sensing in my body and in my, in my spirit that, yeah, we are, we had the opportunity of doing some beautiful question asking and, uh, I think it's quite common knowledge for all of us here in the space and attending this conference that, uh, yeah, we, 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 are, we are invited to a time to reimagine and to understand that the concept of leadership as it stands is just a simple uh, imagination of somebody or certain somebody. Uh, and that we too can also add to the pool of imagination and action around leadership through our own memories, through our own thoughts, through our own children, through our own grandparents, through our own territories, mountains, oceans, seas, deserts, animals, dreams, uh, ancestors of human and non-human descent. 
we are invited to dream and to reimagine leadership. Uh, pick up everyone and hope. Uh, yeah, this can this can spice up your life in some other way. <laughs> it definitely has spiced up mine. And also inviting everyone to continue the conversation. Uh, if Eileen can just help us with the link uh, to the space where the conversation is continuing. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to also putting, adding and continuing the conversation in various shapes and ways.